All right. Okay. Today we are back with another BTS reaction video. We are going to start the journey of Rise of Bangtan. We're going to watch episode one. Jared, this is not just a regular, another BTS reaction video. That's correct. This is the start of something different. That trailer that we watched. Yeah. If you haven't seen us react to the trailer, go check that out. This is a very special BTS reaction video. Chapter one of the rise of Bangtan. So Jared, from the trailer that we watched, we got a sense of what we're about to get into. Yep. We're going to learn a lot about BTS. We're going to learn a lot about K-pop and we're going to learn a lot about the struggles that BTS had to face as they rose to the top. That's why it's called the rise of Bangtan, I would imagine. Yeah. Before we start this episode, let's just look up the rise of Bangtan and the creator. Oh, it's got an IMDb. It is an IMDb. <laughs> I use IMDb a lot for uh, movies and shows to yeah. determine if I'm going to watch it or not. Well, you know it's serious when there's an IMDb on the rise of Bangtan. Yeah. That's highly rated. I know it's only got 10... 10 votes yep but nine out of ten doesn't get better yeah so it says the rise of bantan is a fan-made series that follows the members of bts as they struggle to grow from children to men idols to artists and rookies to legends okay uh let's read the description of the rise of bantan on youtube the first episode okay uh, so the description reads BTS's current success still boggles the mind of almost anyone who lays eyes upon them, including the boys themselves. Mm. However, it's clear that from the very start, there were people who had faith in their abilities. In the first episode, we look at BTS before they made their debut as we discuss the training process of K-pop idols and how Bangtan viewed that time. The Rise of Bangtan is a fan-made documentary taking footage from various sources to be educational and tell the story to the best of our ability. We do not own the rights to any of the following content. So in this first episode, it's a look into BTS before they made their debut. Yeah. We're going to hear about the training process of K-pop idols and how Bangtan viewed that time yeah so this is this is exactly what we need like we said yeah and just a quick question so i know before we begin is bangtan pronounced bangtan or bangtan i think it's pronounced bangtan bangtan got it bangtan bangtan i believe the rise of bangtan you have the rise of bangtan and lastly before we start we have an official comment from the creator of Rise of Bangtan. So the creator says, hi everyone. This is Anissa, the editor of the Rise of Bangtan. I'm still shaking with nerves, but I hope that you all enjoy the first episode of the most ambitious thing I've ever done. Mm. Please make sure to share this with whoever you want to understand your love for, not just BTS, but the genre of K-pop as well. Also, please follow us on social media so you can see the process behind what I'm doing. And so you can help contribute too. Mm. So it looks like Anissa is the editor of The Rise of Bangtan. And somebody who I'm sure we will learn more about and hopefully at some point even get the chance to talk to. Yes. Okay. Jared, very last thing we're going to do is read some comments that came in from our viewers. Okay. So I'll start with the very first one, Selena Akhtar. Selena says, please react to The Rise of Bangtan, the best documentary regarding BTS's journey and the deep information. It's like watching a movie. Mm. And that is exactly the feel I got from the trailer. Yes. We're going to sit back and watch this play out. All right. And the next comment comes from Gabriella. Gabriella writes, I think everything you need to know is on The Rise of Bangtan series. Okay. I think it should be great if you watched that while listening to their music from that period of time. Just a suggestion. You did great work. See you guys soon. Bora Hey. Thank you very much, Gabriella. You are spot on. 
That's exactly what we're going to try to do. Yes. While we watch these episodes, at the same time, we're going to try to keep up with the music that is shared in these episodes and yep. try to go in chronological order. We'll see how it pans out. Of course, we'll probably end up bouncing everywhere, but you know, this is a good, solid foundation. Yeah. Jared, enough said, brother. Let's jump into this first episode of Rise of Bangtan. Here we go. Here we go. The Rise of Bangtan, Chapter 1, We Are Bulletproof. What up, R.M.? <laughs> 2013년 1월 7일, Red Monster 일지. 음, 새로운 한 해가 밝았다. 방 PD님이 어제 저 나에게 말씀을 해주심으로써 뭔가 구체화된 것 같다. 그리고 집에 가서 혼자 자기 전에 앉아서 많은 생각들을 했다. 뭔가 정말 각성하고 포텐셜을 한번 폭발 시켜볼 생각이다. 인생을 마음 먹은 대로 살되 마음대로는 살지 않겠다. 그렇게 다짐하고 음. 올해는 정말 나의 해로 만들고 싶다는 생각뿐이다. 그래서 이렇게 2013년 1월 7일 한번 수도했지. This whole phenomenon around you know, entertainment is interesting because people are adopting it as a lifestyle. K-pop is Korean pop, and, and the thing that is just most remarkable about it is that it really is the all-in-one package. K-dramas, your K-food, the K-beauty. It really rolls into one, and you start slowly but surely kind of getting into the entire K-culture. How big is the K-pop market? $3.4 billion. They can sell out shows really quickly. We're talking about arena shows that can sell out in about two hours. Mm. It's this really diverse, young audience who are so enthusiastic. Psy's Gangnam Style was the one that put it, you know, on the world's radar. Yeah. But, you know, Psy isn't even necessarily the archetype K-pop Korean celebrity. There's the saying, stars are born. K-pop stars, however, are not born. They are made. After the Korean War in 1953, Koreans finally achieved true democracy in 19... I just want to pause it real quick. He said, stars are usually born. Yes. But in K-pop, they are made. K-pop stars are not born. They are made. They are made. Rewind that. I want to hear what he said. The one that put it, you know, on the world's radar. But, you know, Psy isn't even necessarily the archetype K-pop... Korean celebrity. There's the saying, stars are born. K-pop stars, however, are not born. They are made. Mm. Wow. After the Korean War in 1953, Koreans finally achieved true democracy in 1987 by obtaining direct election rights. And this led to a breeding of a new generation of teenagers that were focused not on the collective goal or ideal, but individualism and uniqueness. Mm. However, the music industry failed to recognize this completely different consumer base. South Koreans became familiar with Western pop culture. Western pop music developed with phonographs and radio stations. South Korean pop music, on the other hand, developed with the television. Ah. What we know as K-pop now really started in the early 90s. Then came Sataji M Boys, who combined Korea's pop music with the Western influences of rap, rock, techno, and R&B, and started the craze that we know today. This is what the teens were exactly craving for. It was like showing a light bulb to people living on kerosene lamps. They keep on tackling social issues like reunification, environment, drugs, education. The Tupac of K-pop. Sataji and Boys disbanded after just four years. Sataji changed the way Korean music and Korean society 
operates and thinks. Now corporates see money in K-pop and idol businesses. But what is the process behind generating South Korea's idols? 행사라던가 그 학교 로드 캐스팅 어뭐 백화점 뭐 어디든지 가서 그 인재를 네. 어 발굴하는 하는 그런 캐스팅 과정을 거쳐서요. 2, 30명 정도의 그 좋은 음 친구들을 어한 6개월에서 4, 5년 정도 길게는 네 그렇게 트레이닝을 하게 되죠. Apprentices are here from 1 to 10 p.m. for 4 hours of lessons and 5 hours of practice. Wow. If they go to school, they have to be here from 6 to 10. Sing class, dance class, voice class, rap class, um, acting class, and language class. I receive this kind of strict training every single day um, from morning to night time. What is it about? That's completely different from what happens in the U.S. Yeah. Completely different. And that's unfamiliar to us. Very much so. Uh, this strict nature of molding stars. Yes. Obviously, you have to work to be a star. You have to put in the work. And everywhere around the world, stars can be molded. But I think that's why K-pop is so unique. They take apprentices and they teach them they train them all day all night yes all day and into the night and some even while they're going back and forth to school yeah right yep is that what they said yeah i mean so apprentices they said will train from 1 to 10 p.m however if you're going to school you'll train from 6 to 10 p.m wow wow jordan I'm just fascinated so far in these first four and a half minutes mm -hmm. with the ultra high level quality of the rise of Bangtan. Quality in every sense of the word quality. Research, history, yeah. analysis, yeah. editing, yeah. visuals, transitions. She's a professional. Yeah. Anissa is a professional. <laughs> yeah, this is great, man. Jared, I want to mention a comment that somebody sent in to us. I think this is a good time to do that because I'm trying to pay attention to all the information that's presented. I feel like I'm in class right now. Yeah. You know, you got your notepad out. Yes. I'm trying to keep track. I feel like I'm going to be quizzed afterwards. <laughs> but there was a comment by a woman named Pia. Uh, and Pia sent us some very valuable information. Yeah that was helpful in outlining the history and sort of the cultural differences between many Western countries and Korea. So Pia wrote in and said to us, this is where culture plays an important role when trying to understand K-pop or J-pop as an industry. Western cultures like the US are typically individualistic societies where independence, personal identity, or individualism are highly valued. Mm. You contrast this to Korea's collectivist culture, where belonging to a group or identity is highly valued. In a collectivist society, duality, having more than one identity, for example, you're either an idol or a rapper, not both, and mobility, you respect the elders and the establishment, not dislodge them, are frowned upon. Mm. So she's saying duality and mobility are frowned upon in Korean culture because it's a collectivist society. So when she's talking here about duality, yeah, she's saying that it's frowned upon to be both an idol and a rapper. Yes. She's saying that having more than one identity is frowned upon mm. and we've been hearing a lot of things about the the difference between idol and rapper and how they separate them yeah you know and how like bts gets a lot of criticism or got a lot of criticism in the early days for attempting to be idols yeah i think it's very st confusing still to me but um let me read the rest of this real quick so pia says BTS upended the hierarchy 
in the Korean entertainment industry. They used the internet beginning 2013, YouTube vlogging, to create their global fan base. They basically made the establishment, like Korean broadcasting studios and media, irrelevant. K-pop artists post-BTS basically copied the BTS playbook, grow and engage fans via social media platforms. So, Jared, the first couple of minutes of The Rise of Bangtan, this first chapter, it had a lot of this information that Pia let us know. Yeah. If we, if we go back real quick to the beginning where they were talking about the Korean War, they were saying after the Korean War, many South Korean teenagers and young people started focusing more on individualism. Yeah. Right? And that out of that is what sort of birthed the K-pop movement. Yes. And, and they said that the music industry was not ready for it, mm. essentially. Right. Yep. While, you know, this individualism was birthed, the establishment still lagged behind. Yeah, exactly. After the Korean War in 1953, Koreans finally achieved true democracy in 1987 by obtaining direct election rights. And this led to a breeding of a new generation of teenagers that were focused not on the collective goal or ideal, but individualism and uniqueness. However, the music industry failed to recognize this completely different consumer base. South Koreans became familiar with Western pop culture. Western pop music developed with phonographs and radio stations. South Korean pop music, on the other hand, developed with the television. What we know as K-pop now really started in the early 90s. Then came Sataji M Boys who combined Korea's pop music with the Western influences of rap, rock, techno, and R&B and started the craze that we know today. Oh, wow. I mean, that's like... That's... BTS, imagine them watching this growing up. Oh, yeah. I mean, frankly, they likely weren't even born yet. Well... Many of them weren't even born when this group began. South Taji and Boys. That is a good point. Um, but... Yes, Sao Taji and Boys started the entire K-pop movement off, right? Yep. In the 90s, Sao Taji and Boys yeah. was the first group to start off the movement. And mix uh, South Korean, what they say, South Korean elements with Western elements. Yeah. And the fact that this was televised, mm. you know, it's all these elements Yes. In the music industry, they said, failed to recognize that teenagers were moving more towards individualism. So there was bound to be an explosion of this type of music. And BTS, it seems like, grew from this. This was the foundation of what was to come. Yes. That's what it seems like. And what Pia tells us is that BTS essentially created their own playbook. Yeah. Right? growing and engaging their fans via social media platforms so back when sao taji and boys were doing it yep they had television yeah television bts has the iphone telephones <laughs> yeah man social media hey that's a good point yeah so i know that was a long pause but i wanted to make sure that we got that information and understood it because that's very important i think what is it about Korea that is making this entertainment that doesn't just work domestically but internationally? K-pop's most important merit is the fact that there is a strong melody. The strong performance gives a very strong synergy. The eyes are the same as the eyes of a Korean person, but they have the feeling of the Korean person. Anyone who's ever seen a K-pop video would know everyone just seems like these gods and goddesses of pop music. Heavy, heavy makeup, all that stuff, very thin. They're almost like untouchable. I think that's where the passion comes from too. They're just so high above you that you can't help but completely worship them. BTS! Making their US TV debut. Make some noise for BTS! 5 years ago, 
정말 이제 미국까지 완전 진출을 하는 그런 그룹이 동양에서 나오지 않을까 싶어요. The K-pop band at the UN General Assembly, BTS, becoming the first Korean artist to headline Wembley Stadium. It is BTS mania. <웃음> Wait, hold on. That was just the intro to the episode. <웃음> That was the intro to the episode. Jared. Okay, okay. We, this is something different, man. This is something different than everything else we've watched about BTS. Yes, this is, this is different. What he just said there um, about what makes K-pop so yeah. appealing. Yeah. It's addictive melodies, mm -hmm. right? And then he got into basically saying that the choreography, the entire package... And what we've been talking about all along is that when we watch BTS, it overwhelms us. Yes. Because they have the entire package, you know? Wow. Absolutely. And Jared, a point that caught me sort of off guard, but was so true. He said, part of the appeal is also that you have Korean artists with a Western feel. Yeah. To the music yeah and our first ever song we listened to was black swan and what did we say we said what in the world wait is this like b2k vibes here yeah. b2k is a an american group r&b group so we got the feel that we were listening to something similar to r&b yes he's saying that is part of the appeal the melodies yes that's very interesting all right, so we are just about to begin the chapter. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to try our best to keep this going, to take notes, and then discuss it at the end. Yes. We may pause a few times here and there, but mm. I'm ready. I'm ready too, Jared. Let's, Let's get go. into it, man. Hey yo, Hitman Bang introduces Hit It the Second Audition. Producer 방식이고요. 2011년 Hit It 어, 힙합 오디션 두 번째 기회로 여러분을 찾아왔습니다. 아 제가 힙합 문화를 이끌어갈 여러분들을 찾고 있는데요. 2011년 Hit It 오디션 방탄소년단의 <웃음> 멤버가 될 주인공을 기다리고 있습니다. 올해 Hit It 오디션에서는요 작년과는 다르게 랩, 댄스, 노래까지. 다양한 장르에서 배틀 형식으로 이루어질 예정인데요. 왜냐하면 힙합은 문화니까 얼마나 매력적인 분들이 또 얼마나 많이 참여해 주실지 너무 기대가 됩니다. 지금까지 Hitman Bang 방시혁이었습니다. 감사합니다. 빅 히트 엔터테인먼트라는 방시혁 씨가 대표인 회사인데 저는 음악을 듣는 사람들에게 울림을 줄수 있는 콘텐츠를 정말 잘 만들어내는 것에 집착합니다. 2013 itself, the number of prospective people that wanted to become K-pop singers reached past 1 million. Getting into one of those entertainment agencies doesn't guarantee their debut these days. 방탄소년단의 모든 멤버는 지방에서 막 서울로 올라온 어린 학생들이었습니다. 우리 회사도 이른바 주류라고 볼 수는 없었죠. 그러나 한 가지 자신은 있었습니다. 이 빛나는 재능을 가진 친구들과 함께 의미 있는 무언가를 만들어낼 수 있을 것 같다는 확신이었습니다. Wow. I know we said we wouldn't pause. I think we have to pause. That's all right. Jared, one million people wanted to be K-pop stars. Yeah. And the group has seven in it. Seven members. They searched from 2010 to 2012. Yes. And they were holding auditions. And Hitman Bang says, I obsess over making content that resonates with people. That is beautiful. <laughs> it's coming from the top. Yes. Top down, Jared. Again, we learned a little bit about him when you have a CEO who operates that way. You get the outcome you do. Yeah, and I mean, the search right 
This is the beginning search for the members. It's very systematic. Yeah. Right? It's very intentional um, and highly professional. Yes. Highly professional, very serious. I could go on and on about the adjectives. Yeah. Let's continue on. Okay. I think what makes K-pop K-pop is the time that we spend as a trainee. Mm. 안녕하세요. We all live together, sort of like a boarding school, like a trainee version. What's up, everybody? This is Rap Monster from BTS, and I'm here for the first English song, finally. Oh, hello, hello. I think we just got a little snippet of Kendrick. We're talking swimming pools remix. That, that sounded like a swimming pool remix, Jordan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, rewind it for me. Please. Hold on. I'm going to rewind it all the way back to when RM just pops on the screen. <laughs> because every time he pops on the screen, Jordan, I'm inclined to say, what up, RM? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, something about RM. Just the, the charisma. Yes. The charisma. And the knowledge that he's a genius from what everybody says. He's yeah. a genius, Jordan. Yeah. And one of the few group members who can speak English very fluently. Yes. Yes. In just a cool yeah. and collected manner. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Rap Monster from BTS, and I'm here for the first English song. Finally. Oh, <laughs> I've been rapping for like since 2007. It's like seven years. When I came here, it was 2010. It's like three years ago. Wow. The company told me that you don't need to dance first, but you know it has changed. The project, the whole thing was changing, and I and I and I had to dance, you know, <laughs> to survive. I don't know how to move my body, you know, like technically. Wow. beautifully so i was really angry and i was just stressed out wow. as time passed by my dancing teachers they taught me that they showed me that dancing is a cool thing <laughs> i have to go now <laughs> uh, okay so finish dance is cool dance is good stuff right right but rapping is cooler hip-hop yeah <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. What? I didn't know that RM, you know, couldn't dance before he joined the group. Jared, when we watched the dance practice, you remember the comment from Sundog? I don't remember it. One of our viewers. He said something like, BTS, almost all of their members had very limited formal dance instruction. Okay. Prior to becoming who they are. Gotcha. Prior to their debut. Got it. Or even becoming trainees. Wow. So yeah. that, and RM is describing here how that was very stressful. Yes. You know, not being able to 
dance formally and having to learn the ropes all over again, that caused a lot of stress on him. It's cooler. Rapping Hip-hop. is yeah. cooler. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jin, right? What up, Jin? <laughs> 안녕하세요. 방탄소년단의 맏 형, 진입니다. 나이는 22살이고 팀에서 보컬을 맡고 있습니다. 저 같은 경우는 학교를 등교를 하다가 길거리 캐스팅을 오늘은 다시 추워진 것 같다. 어, 오랜만에 다시 겨울이 온것 같았고 감기에 걸리지 않으려면 옷을 든든히 입어야겠다고 생각했다. 가족이 주위에서 날 챙겨주지 않으니 음, 내가 챙겨야겠다는 그런 음. 생각을 했다. 2013년 1월 24일 지낼지. <웃음> I love these diaries. Yeah. Uh, hold up. 2013년. All these snippets, Jared. The snippets are what gets us, brother. It's getting us, Jared. That's by R&B artist Joe. It said it's a song by Joe. Oh, okay. That's not. They're just using it as, you know, to dance to. Yeah. So I almost thought that was a BTS song right here. I don't think it was. Jin's diary. End. (laughs) Pull My Hair by Joe. Yeah. Look that up for me real quick. I don't mean to boss you around, Jerry. You just got the keyboard, brother. I got the the pad. Jerry got the keyboard. We have our roles just like BTS. Yeah. Pull My Hair by Joe. Jerry, the Western influence is heavy. Well, the, the R&B influence, you know, the beautiful rhythm. You know, this is these types of songs are amazing to dance to. Yes, right? And, you know, for a minute, I thought that we were getting another glimpse into one of BTS's hidden gems. Mm hmm. I cannot wait to get to those. I want to jump forward right now into all of them and just binge every single one of them in my bed, eyes closed, headphones on. But I know that the much more fulfilling route. Mm hmm is to learn and truly appreciate each of these songs. Spot on. I thought, you know, we were getting another singularity. Yes. You know, but it seems like these songs, Joe, these Western artists influenced, like you said, the R&B that we've gotten a glimpse of. Yeah. The singularities, the stigma, which we're, we still need to listen to. Yeah. And many more. Interesting. I, I'll probably pause at every single snippet I hear. <laughs> JK. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Middle. Middle. Wow. 막내 졸업식에 진영이랑 나랑 슈가영이랑 같이 갔는데 약간은 의젓해지지 않을까 하는 기대도 가져본다. Mm. Wale. 지민입니다. 나이는 19이고요. 팀에서 춤과 보컬을 맡고 있습니다. <웃음> 부산에 있을 때 부산 예고에 다닐 때는 네. 제가 무용을 배웠었는데요. 네. 저한테는 진짜 어려운 과제였던 것 같아요. 그때부터 네. 항상 춤을 췄기 때문에 웹몬스터 형이랑 슈가 형이랑 작업 때문에 일찍 못 내려가는 건 되게 안타깝게 생각하고 있는데 It upsets him, yeah. 얼른 끝내고 푹 쉬러 갔으면 좋겠고 Rest. 아. 나도 이제 쉬러 갑니다. 
평가 끝나고 점수 같은 거 나와요. 누가 A고 누가 B고 누가 C고 오늘의 할당 몸무게가 있어요. 그러니까 오늘 몇 그램 빼고 말이에요. 네. 와 그래서 그거를 하루에 무조건 빼야 귀가를 할수 있는 어. 못 빼면? 못 빼면 뺄 때까지 하다 가야 돼요. 와우. 근데 그러고 나서 월말 평가 때 몸무게가 안 나오면 은 진짜로 잘라버리는 거죠. 아 아웃된 친구들이 한 명, 두명 정도는 있어야 얘네들이 자극을 받고 더 노력을 하지 않을까 싶기도 합니다. 다시 연습하다가 갑자기 울고 있어요. 어? 너왜 울어? 어, 나 잘렸어. 어, 그런 친구들이 너무, 너무 많아요. 네. 갑자기 불안감 오면서 나도 언젠가 저렇게 될수 있는 거구나. 그런 식으로 이렇게 뭐 이건 데뷔는 없다. 뭐 앞으로 앨범은 없다. 이렇게 아니면 뭐 누구누구 나가라. 이렇게 되는 거. 경쟁, it's so 경쟁. Everything was 경쟁 that, that time. 연습생들끼리 엄청 경쟁이 심하대요. 데뷔를 하려고. Wow. I remember having to send a good friend of mine home every month because they got eliminated from the test. Like, it's really harsh. It wasn't a very, like, happy vibe. Starting at such a young age, I was just like, okay, if that's what it is, I have to do it. That's what I want. If I want to chase my dreams, that's what I have to do. The K-pop industry has faced criticism for its handling of trainees. Still, the law of becoming a K-pop idol remains a huge draw for many. You read the news back home, um, and there's all the sort of fear around K-pop and how it's it's treating the idols badly. But we do the same with football academies. We do it with all sorts of sport. Mm. You have to start kids young because that's how you develop the muscle memory. Muscle Is memory. it any different to what we do? I don't know. I don't think so. Big Sean now. Big Sean. <laughs> Meek Mill too. Ah. So now we're on to, to J Hope, but you know, I'm loving these diaries. Right? Yeah. I hope it continues throughout the entire decade that you know BTS has been together. Yes. But just a quick comment about what we just heard from some of the women trainees mm. to hear one of the members or you know, one of the individuals talk about the strict weight requirements. Mm, yeah. Right? She said how if you didn't meet the weight requirement, uh, you may be cut or they may threaten you yeah. uh, and say that you won't debut. Jordan, I'll be very interested to see if BTS faced any of that mm, having to do with their weight in the particular. Weight. Yeah. I'm very interested in that. Uh, but wow, just to see how harsh it could be and how strict you know, the trainee system could be. Yes. That's very, very difficult to, to see people um, you know, pour their hearts out and undergo those types of restrictions. It's so interesting because what was the guy saying, Jared? He said, you know, K-pop gets a bad rap for being this harsh uh, place where, you know, stars or idols are just pumped out. Yeah. They're just pumped out and it's so terrible, but it's not much different than football academies Yep, or another type of sport where you start very, very young and it's about building the muscle memory, like he said. Yeah. And the purpose is to get those what 10,000 hours in yeah you know how they say 10,000 hours is what it takes to become great at your craft yes that's an interesting um comparison right there because viewing this from our lens it does look very very harsh yeah i mean to get to your point about the sports academies yeah we played basketball yep. growing up and we played in a uh, summer mm. league or union, whatever you know, it's it's called, known as AAU, mm -hmm. the Amateur Athletic Union, mm. Jordan. And you know, if you had an AAU tournament one weekend, you knew you were playing all day Saturday mm -hmm. morning 
and maybe throughout the night and all day Sunday. Mm. And by the end of that tournament, your body felt completely exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's an interesting point. I think it's it's so mesmerizing for people like us because at the end of it, the goal is to become a super, super, superstar. Right? An idol. Yeah. A K-pop star. The goal of playing basketball or football may be to make it to the NBA or the NFL, play professional. But this, I feel like, is on a different stage. Uh, that's a that's a good point. Yeah. 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 Just one more point. We heard, I think it was Jimin, who was talking about the hours that RM and another member spend producing. Yeah. And he said it's it upsets him. It upsets him because he he just hopes that one day they'll be able to take a break. Yes. They'll be able to get that rest they deserve. Jared, that was so powerful for me because going through all those days together, going through all of that together, and just wanting to see your group member get some rest. You know what that's called? What's that called? Empathy. Empathy, but a bond that going through that and when you make it, nobody can say anything. Mm. Who, you want to you wanna attempt to type through a keyboard and say something to me or my group member when I saw RM and all my group members get tired to the point where you're pulling all-nighters? Yeah. You want to say something about me. Do it. Or my group. We're bulletproof. This is amazing, Jordan. Like, so much respect for Anissa. This is amazing. It turns from young, you are so tired. So you back to the group. Happy Valentine's Day. <웃음> 네 안녕하세요 제이홉입니다 나이는 스무 살이고요 팀에서 랩춤 노래를 담당하고 있고 이름처럼 희망적인 존재입니다 광주에서 마음이 서울 올라와가지고 아무것도 모르고 죽기 살기로 어, 서바이벌 그런 오디션을 음, 생활을 겪으면서 그렇게 지내고 지금까지 쳐왔던 춤을 어, 더 풀어놨고 더 멋있게 잘 추고 싶다. 이두 가지 목표를 꼭 이뤄서 방탄이 데뷔할 때 대중분들께나 팬분들께 음. 꼭 좋은 모습으로 보여드리고 싶다. 2013년 2월 14일 제이홉의 첫 로그. Bye, J Hope. See you, J Hope. Tangi, 자발적으로 참여할 수 있게 했습니다. 그들에게 딱한 가지만을 요구했습니다. 방탄소년단의 음악은 방탄소년단 내면에 있는 이야기가 되어야 한다는 것이었죠. Well, why not for me? I missed it. I was trying to write something here. 그들에게 딱한 가지만을 요구했습니다. 방탄소년단의 음악은 방탄소년단 내면에 있는 이야기가 Pause 되어야 that. 한다는 것이었죠. Pause that. He said, I only required one thing. That their music must contain the stories of their inner selves. What in the world? Yep. Who thinks of that? Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> Hitman Bang. Right? That's his name? Hitman Bang. Boss Man. What in the world? That is beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. That gets me to a comment that a fellow army sent to us personally to give us some background information on what we were about to watch. Yeah. And I think this fits well with what Hitman just said. Oh, yeah. So 
Uh, this fellow army writes, part of the message of this chapter, the first chapter of the rise of Bangtan, yeah. is the harsh idle trainee system. However, big hit was less harsh. Yes, It's to show the contrast. The guys had rules, but nothing like some of the other agencies and they had much more creative freedom. Spot on. Hit it on the nail. Spot on. Spot on. When she says they had much more creative freedom, the ultimate creative freedom is to be able to create music that contains the stories of their inner selves. Imagine if they weren't given that freedom. Ooh. Could you imagine, Jared, where they would be at today? Well, they one be trapped within themselves possibly and two likely not in almost every single country as they are in today and why is that i have an idea tell me why we have army writing into us telling us how much bts changed their lives how much they helped them yeah. through their depression through their grief through their life many of the things that army found consoled them came from the stories of bts's inner selves and came from bts's journey yeah. to get there dude it's right it came from the journey that we just saw a glimpse of yeah of bts eating together yeah in that same restaurant and then going to dance practice in the basement yeah. for years yep jordan this is beautiful oh my goodness <laughs> What up, sugar? Sugar, sugar. Swimming pools still. <laughs> School of Tears, it's what it's called. I'll pause it real quick. The fellow army who wrote that last comment into us also made note that the ages they say in the videos, so in, in the chapters, yeah. are two years older than the way we count age here. So when JK was saying he's 16, he was 14. He's 14. Yeah. That's why he said middle school. Yeah. So that's just something to keep in mind Yeah. for me, for us. And one more thing. We probably should have read the entire comment, but yeah. um, another thing that this fellow army writes is that V does not appear until chapter two. So, you know, we're seeing Sugar right here. We saw several of the other members. We won't see V until yes. chapter two. Because it said he had been training with the group all along. Yep. But Big Hit kept him unannounced until debut as a secret member. Mm. And we learned a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Hit it. Wow. Mm. Jared, look at him. He looks tired. There you go. He looks tired, yet still optimistic. All of them are optimistic in their logs. All of them are exhausted, mm -hmm. you can tell. Like, they know the long road they have ahead of them. Yes. But they're also very sharp, on point. They all have bought into the group. And that's what I think Pia, when she says that Korea has a very collectivist 
culture. Yes. Even if, uh, you know, K-pop or certain groups, you know, brought more of an individualistic nature to the scene. Yeah. That collective nature still exists. It's not about one person. Listen, just by listening to a few of these journal entries so far, Jordan, yeah. almost every single member has referenced another member, right? And talked about the collective. They've rarely talked about themselves. Jordan, it was Jimin yeah. in his vlog who said, I just want the other members to get the rest that they need. Mm. And then he said, oh yeah, I want rest too. Mm. But I want the other members to get rest. That's something different. It's ingrained in who you are, right? In all of the, the values and norms and the way that you're brought up, yeah. the way that you're raised in Seoul, South Korea, is to have a collective identity, right? I, that's what the, the vibe I'm getting. And it is so very powerful. Jared, that's an understatement. <laughs> it is so very powerful because it seems like when you buy in, the world is your oyster. Yes. Literally, you buy in you can do anything. And I think BTS has proven that. Watching this is like gaining access to the best of the best of the best behind the scenes, early journey content. Yeah. You could imagine. Like think about them back then. Literally try to imagine sugar. <laughs> what were his thoughts at this time? Right. And the, the level of uh, anxiety and insecurity about the future. Exactly. You know how hard you work. You know how hard your members work, your brothers. Yet, you still think, where will we be in 10 years? I know where I want to be. Yes. And I know how to place myself in a position to optimize the results. Right? And that's exactly what Sugar just said. He said, I want to get better. I want to get better so that I prove myself on, on debut day. Jared, this was a constant theme in No More Dream, We Are Bulletproof, those songs. <laughs> and it was like, okay, wow, yeah, they put in a lot of work. Yeah, yeah we, wow, they keep saying that their pen, they, they, they write all the time, they rap all the time, they put in a lot of work, and other people didn't. No, 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 you can see the bags under his eyes. <laughs> That's what's telling us he put in the work. Yes. That's what's telling us all of them put in the work. Yes. That is, is something different. I'm going to keep saying it, man. It's something different. Different. Mm. What do you say? I missed that. Oh, that's something. That's someone else, right? It's JK, no? Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you asked earlier if they deal with any of the weight yeah. issues that the, the ladies did. He said they're preparing to take pictures for the album. Yeah, and I mean, he said that He's on a diet. Right. He didn't give any indication as to whether or not that was imposed on him or whether it was by choice. You know, maybe we'll learn more about that. Maybe Army can yeah. chime in and uh, let us know if there were any uh, weight 
requirements or pressure yeah. Yeah. pressure in positions anything like that that'd be yeah. interesting to know i'm sorry jared my brain is like it's being flooded with every piece of bts content i we have listened to so far and watched so far so when i hear j-hope say that i think of in the future you know not back then maybe back then but when when uh antis were coming at j-hope about his appearance mm. that's what i'm thinking about right now so hearing him it sounds like he had to deal with appearance issues for a while and i'm sure all of the members did but it's interesting to hear j-hope say that yeah we haven't heard this. Charisma. <laughs> Oh, can play. Hello, we're all so unique. <laughs> What up, Barry? <laughs> ah, pressure. Ah, I love that. <laughs> I'm going to go to the dance. 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 I
끝나고 바로 녹음을 음. 한다. 3년 동안 연습을 네. 하면서 그런 네, 핏땀이 서려있는 그런 곡이 아닌가 싶습니다. 뭔가 좀 되게 친구들 다 대학 가고 캠퍼스 가서 이제 뭐 연애도 하고 뭐 그런 거 보면 듣고 보면 뭔가 조금 부럽기도 하고 솔직히 그렇게 하지만 우린 데뷔를 할 거니까 뭐. 그래 그렇지 <웃음> 네. 모든 사람의 부러움을 가지고 네. 와우 Bang bang. Bang bang bang. Ah, 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 지옥이었어요너무힘들었어요끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍끔찍
Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa. Yeah. Young, Wild, and Free. Simply amazing. I don't feel worthy enough to be consuming this amazing content about the amazing journey of the amazing group BTS. Like, the word amazing just doesn't cut it. (laughs) Jared, I think some things are starting to make sense now. Yeah. A whole lot of sense to me. The past couple months, ARMY, many people have sent in paragraphs. Yes. Essays. Talking about you will be mind blown. Yes. Please give them a chance. Thank you so much for giving them a chance and for appreciating their art the way it deserves to be appreciated. Yeah. And now I understand what they mean. The lyrics can't just be swept to the side. The choreography cannot just be swept to the side. Jared, this is because of everything we just heard them say. RM didn't know how to dance. He had to painfully learn how to dance. Each and every member had to undergo a painful journey. Yeah. A painful, painful journey that rewarding is not the word. That was a very unique journey for each member. Yes. Yet a journey that collided. Right? And then once that journey collided, you're no longer unique. Right, Jordan? You're working towards a collective goal and everybody is spending eight hours a day dancing. No questions asked. No. And if one member may be better, you know, technically Mm -hmm. at dancing than another member, that member will be helping the next member. Jordan, yeah, this is incredible. Just to see their spirits, even during the points of pure exhaustion. Yes. These are the dog days. The dog days. They're exhausted, yet. Look at them here at the end, Jordan. Yeah. When they are putting their spirits on display for army so close to debut so close to debut right and i don't think army was even a thing back then (laughs) i think army was created from what i uh searched up in 23 or 2015 yeah on july 9th july 9th which is the day that we will be releasing this episode yeah That might be the universe. (laughs) It has to be, man. Jared, to say that they worked hard is an understatement. That's what they say in their music. We worked hard. We did this. Okay. Everybody works hard. No, no, no. They worked to exhaustion, like you said. Yes. They worked extremely, extremely hard. And they deserve respect for that let alone all of the struggles and hardships, everything that they had to overcome. This journey is just beginning. And shout out to Anissa because everything that you all said to us on how amazing this Rise of Bangtan series is, it was that much more. It was 10 times more amazing than I even imagined the editing the information everything was on point everything was on point for us to just sit here and watch a movie like selena said and that's why i said i don't feel worthy of consuming this yeah right what did i do to 
you know, receive the gift of consuming this. <laughs> this is perfect. It's inspirational. It is. It's inspirational. All right, let's wrap this up, man. We could go on and on, but we'll save that for chapter two. Yeah, and we do have a deleted scene Yes, from this episode that we'll be checking out. Make sure you check that out. Uh, but for now, episode one complete. Episode one is in the books, and I learned a lot. You learned, learned a, lot. a lot. Learned a whole lot. It contextualizes K-pop and BTS in a much needed way. Oh, yeah. You know, so uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for spending the time to follow us on our journey, to watch us react to Rise of Bangtan. You can expect many more to come. And like Jared said, we're going to try our best to react to their music in the same time frame that we react to the Rise of the Bangtan series. Yes. But we will be jumping and jumping and jumping because the R&B... The solo projects. Jared, we got a, a lot. There's not enough time, Jared. There's not enough time. There's not enough time. We got to get to it. We'll get to it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure if you enjoyed it, give it a like. Leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to turn on those notifications. But most importantly, be kind and keep an open mind, everybody. Peace. Peace.